The Liquid Culture. What's up, everybody? Mitchell Chirac here with The Liquid Culture and another episode today of Eight Wines You Should Be Drinking. Uh, today's episode is orange wine. I'm going to give you a little bit of an intro into orange wine. I don't know if I've had an orange wine. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I've had an orange wine in a video uh, before, maybe for a producer or, or a region or something like that, but um, I know for a fact I have not done a video just about orange wine. Um, so really excited to let some of you guys out there know a little bit about orange wine, why you should be drinking it, when you should be drinking it, because um, I think that it's a wine that either people don't know about, uh, have never heard of, or who have heard of it, but they're not sure really what it is and if it's something that they're going to enjoy. And uh, I would love to get you out there and get you excited about trying orange wine because to me, fall signifies orange wine. We've had a little bit of, a, I guess, an Indian summer, one might call it. Uh, we thought that we were gonna be into fall uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then this past week we've had you know temperatures up in the high 80s and not super stoked about that, but what I am super stoked about is that next week looks like it's gonna be highs in the mid 70s and uh, lows down in the uh, low 50s. So really, really excited about fall coming on. And orange wine to me is always something that I love to drink in the fall. I remember first orange wine I ever had was back in 2016 or 2017. Uh, my wife and I uh, were living in Dallas still at the time and I had gone out and bought some wine for the weekend and it was uh, late October, right around Halloween. It, I, don't, I don't even, I don't, I don't think it was Halloween night. It may have been Halloween night. Uh, we hunkered down, it was a cool evening. I think we lit a fire if I'm not mistaken. Watched Stranger Things, which was either the first or second season of Stranger Things, and I popped a bottle of orange wine. And ever since then, there's been just something about orange wine that gets me excited about fall, gets me excited about the month of October and Halloween and, you know, watching kind of spooky things and having, you know, fires lit and uh, leaves turning colors and all that good stuff. So, um, what is orange wine? So, orange wine, very simply, guys, is white wine that has spent an extended period of time on the skins. What do I mean by that? So a lot of times with white wine production, what you have is the grapes are harvested, and unlike red wines that take their color from the skin, with white wines, you go ahead and directly press that wine and get just the juice to start your fermentation, to make your wine, and then you've got a, a, a nice white wine. Sometimes colors of white wine, as I'm sure you all know, will lead from nice and clear all the way up to nice dark golden colors, um, but certainly not anything like this. Um, so orange wine is essentially just white wine made in a red wine style, and you can have varying degrees of your orange wine based off of how long uh, the skins were left in contact with the juice, uh, how what kind of vessels it was aged in, what kind of vessels it was fermented in, um, all manner of different styles of orange wine, um, just like with whites, rosés, and reds. Not every single orange wine is going to taste the same. <laughs> Where can you expect to see orange wines from? Well, you can really find orange wines from all over the world. Uh, we make some down here in Texas. Uh, they make them certainly in California and Oregon. Um, you'll see them in France. I've got one from Alsace here today. Uh, but really the predominant area where you can expect to find orange wines from, or, or areas, um, Italy is a big player in the orange wine production game, especially Northern Italy. Uh, and then Eastern Europe. And what do I mean by Eastern Europe? Generally, you find a lot of really, really good kind of the OG orange wines from places like Slovenia and Georgia. Um, those are really kind of the countries that are known most for orange wine production. Uh, so the first one I'm drinking here is, um, it, it, honestly, I, you can see I, I, I'm, I'm a good distance into this bottle. Uh, I popped this open the other night, um, you know, again, I, I, I'm, I'm ready for orange wine season, guys. Uh, I drank one, a different one I drank uh, last night from Austin Winery uh, here in Texas, a uh, uh, orange uh, Marsan Roussan blend. Very nice, very clean, not really funky or anything like that. Um, really very entry level 
uh, orange wine. Same with this one. So Calcareous is just a fun little project out of Italy. Um, they, they're kind of a natural wine producer. They've got some, these cool kind of periodic table uh, type labels here. Not going to spend too much time on this one just because this was a, a bottle that I had in the fridge and I just brought it because, um, you know, I was shooting orange wines. I might as well bring one that I've already got open. But um, this one, a very kind of like tangerine, almost like kind of this creamy vanilla dream sickle kind of nose on the palate. Again, super clean. Um, really, to me, drinks a lot more like a rosé. Um, really well balanced acidity with the mouthfeel that you get from it. Um, orange wines can go the funky route. They can go the challenging uh, route and this one is a very very entry level orange wine. It comes in that liter bottle and it's about 25 bucks for the liter. Um, so if you see that one, I would certainly say that if you're uh, just kind of dipping your toe into the orange wine scene, this one's a really really good entry level starter orange wine. It comes it, it does come from Italy, but not in northern Italy. Uh, like I was talking about before, uh, it actually comes from Puglia, which is down at the heel of the boot, um, one might say, um, and it's a uh, you know, five-day maceration, so very, very colorful, um, native yeast fermentation, organically grown grapes, all that good stuff. Moving on, we've got one here from Alsace. Totally different color, as you can tell. This one, if someone poured this for you and said it was an orange wine, you, you probably would be surprised to hear that given it looks very much like your kind of standard white wine. Got a nice light, light cloudiness to it as a, a probably an unfiltered and unfined uh, wine here. This one's made with Sylvaner, which is a grape, a white grape that's grown predominantly in Alsace, which if you're not familiar with Alsace, it's that northeast region that lies right on the border of France and Germany. Lots of swapping back and forth of ownership of this area over the over the decades of between France and Germany and who actually owns that area. Currently it's um, under French control. Um, but uh, Sylvaner is the grape and this one only spent two days uh, macerating whereas the Puglia orange wine spent five days uh, macerating. Those skins just sitting on that juice before fermentation started, taking in all that color and flavor and mouthfeel. This one only spent two days. Uh, so again, you're already seeing the range in which orange wines can go. Um, this one may not even end up like on our restaurant list. They may not even put this under an orange wine uh, category uh, just because it doesn't look orange, but because of that two day skin maceration, it is technically considered an orange wine. Ooh. Okay, this one's funky. This one smells uh, like a hamster cage. A hamster cage that's got a, a couple of freshly like sliced lemons just kind of lining it. Um, and I'm not saying that is a bad thing per se, but this has that kind of musty, yeasty, uh, funky kind of um, little bit of uh, you know, you hear sometimes with, uh, with, with Riesling, sometimes you get hear that cat pee, uh, kind of smell. This has that for sure. Wow. Um, it's crazy how much I want to continue smelling this wine as off-putting as you guys who aren't smelling it probably think that it is. Uh, it actually is a very, very intriguing aroma. Wow, surprisingly tame on the palate. Not um, not lacking in flavor, definitely flavorful. Lemon and pear, almost kind of oxidized pear, overripe um, kind of pear on the palate. Yeah, this one's going like, like kind of that like kind of funky cider route for me a little bit. Um, really interesting wine here. Um, acidity is like poof, jamming high. Um, eight months on the lees, 
which for those of you out there who are not, uh, not familiar with that, so resting a wine on the lees is essentially once you're done with fermentation, you have all that dead yeast just kind of fall out of suspension and rest on the bottom of your aging vessel. And the longer that wine sits on those lees, you go in and you stir it up. Um, you make sure that those lees are, you know, really kind of just working their way through the wine. It gives you this very creamy, uh, very structured kind of mouthfeel. It gives more body to a white wine, especially one that's super high in acidity. It gives it more body to kind of balance that acidity out, whereas it may be a little bit mouth puckering if you didn't have that creamy thing going on from that Lee's aging. Mm. I'm really into this wine. Um, I'm also really excited to see how this wine evolves over the next day or two um, of drinking it because um, I think that some of the aroma will come come down a little bit and this might even, the, the mouthfeel might even ratchet up slightly um, with a little bit of oxidation. I think this wine is, is really, I'm really, really digging this wine. Um, I think it could be an excellent food pairing wine. Um, to me, I'm for whatever reason, I've got like a creamy uh, truffle lobster pasta, pasta kind of thing is running through my brain right now. Um, I'd really have to give that a try to see if it would in fact work. But I think that kind of funky nose, that truffle kind of comes in to pair with that funky nose and that lemon uh, kind of thing that, that's that, that really kind of real crisp and, and sharp, freshly sliced lemon would work well with a creamy pasta, cut through all that richness from the lobster and that um, creamy sauce. Really, really cool. I don't know, did I, uh, I don't think I gave you guys a, an up close on the label here. It's pretty cool. So, I, and I don't even think I told you the producer or anything like that. So Christoph Lindenbaum, uh, Martin Pfau, uh, is the uh, the name of this wine. So it's about $30 a bottle. Should I, I've actually seen this bottle. So we sell this at La Bergerie here in um, uh, Fredericksburg, and I've seen it on a couple other uh, wine, uh, natural wine shop menus as well. So um, it's out there. It's out there to be found. This one, however, I brought as a little bit of a flex. Um, this is a typically a, a little bit of a more difficult wine to find. Not as difficult as, say, Gravner, which I also have a bottle of. I'll probably shoot on, on camera as well at some point because that's just like a world-class wine, not just orange wine, but world-class wine. Um, the Radicon, uh, the Radicon Jaco, uh, this is a, a very kind of cult following uh, orange wine here. Uh, this comes from uh, Venezia Giulia, which is from Northern Italy. Uh, it is, uh, it's made with that Tokai Friano grape, which is very classically used, uh, in orange wine production. And this one, the, the kind of the methods to make this wine are a little bit more involved even still, um, than the, the Lindenbaum here. Uh, so skin contact on this wine. So remember the first two, we talked about two days and five days skin maceration, then they went through native yeast fermentation, and then, you know, went, moved on from there. With this wine, you actually have the skin stay in contact with the juice, not only through maceration, alcoholic fermentation, but even all the way through until the winter time, the skin stays in contact. So if the grapes are harvested, let's just say in you know, probably in Italy, you're probably seeing harvest uh, of these grapes in uh, sometime around September or October. So they're staying in contact, the skins are staying in contact with the juice all the way through to December. So we're back on this very orange colored uh, hue of the wine here. I mean, very kind of almost copper um, colored orange wine here. This one 100% would show up uh, in an orange wine category. So, um, we talked about skin contact. This wine is also, it, all of the fermentation takes place in oak vats and as well as a 36 month aging period post fermentation. So some oxidative qualities I, I would 100% expect uh, with this wine. Indeed, no question. I've had Radicon once before, 
really enjoyed it. So this is a 2014 vintage, uh, which has definitely got some age, but orange wines are something that because of that phenolic character they get from their skins, you have that ageability with these wines. They, they can go for quite some time, depending on you know how you want to drink them. If you want them a little fresh and more approachable and fruity, you drink them earlier. You want to go the nutty, caramelized, uh, oxidative kind of route. Um, you get You get them with some age on them. But yeah, I'm thinking like, I've got like almond, and not just like almond, the nut, but I'm thinking like the almond tree with the flower, kind of floral nuttiness going on here with this wine. Hmm. You know, funny enough, I think I like this guy better. Um, though I'll, I'll say this: let me let me let me back up. So, as far as serving and um, you know, uh, serving temperature, decanting, all of that kind of stuff, you want to think about that a lot with orange wine. Um, you honestly want to think about it a lot with every wine you drink, but with orange wine, you really want to kind of know what kind of wine you're getting, or at least take that first sip from when you pop the bottle to determine, do I want to drink this fridge temperature? Do I want to drink it wine fridge temperature? Do I want to drink it room temperature? And then two, excuse me. And then two, you want to determine, is this a wine that I think would benefit from decanting? And I think that this Radicon 100% would benefit from decanting. I think that there's some strong tannin uh, character that I'm getting. So not as approachable as the first two uh, orange wines. There's a, a, a pretty, I mean, still mouth kind of drying effect going on with the tannin, which you're going to experience because the tannin comes from the skin. So the longer the skins are in contact with the juice, the more tannin you're going to extract from those skins. And uh, this one certainly has some tannin that I think with a good decanting would mellow out a bit and I think it would be a much more imbalanced uh, orange wine. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of interesting things that are kind of underneath all the tannin that's kind of masking them a little bit. Um, there is some oak, oxidative oak characteristic going on with it as well, which to me I would like to see a little bit less of. Um, but this is certainly a wine that tastes like fall to me. It's got this uh, kind of uh, eucalyptus uh, kind of vibe to it. It's got that almond, floral, nutty, character and I could totally see myself drinking a glass of this at room temperature after about an hour long decant by a fire, lay a pallet out, pop some fun, you know, scary movie or, uh, or a TV series, a little thriller TV series, something kind of um, with a little bit of spook to it and uh, I, I could really see myself enjoying a glass of this with, uh, with that kind of a setting. So guys, that's orange wine. I know for a fact that probably even in my next video, I think I have another orange wine. I'm drinking a lot of orange wines right now. We're getting into fall, heavier whites, that that kind of, we're getting into that Beaujolais, Pinot Noir kind of weather, um, all that good stuff. So uh, a lot of fun things on the horizon here. Expect, uh, you know, some, some more content coming through in the fall because that's, uh, as I've said before, my favorite time of year. So thanks for watching, guys. Mitchell Chirac, The Liquid Culture. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.